startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Today I'm bringing you another interview from the German blockchain scene, talking to Martin. Hey, how you doing? Hi Joe, yeah, doing good. Um, great to be here today with you and looking forward to our uh, talk. Yeah, totally my pleasure. Uh, we may say upfront that this conversation is in media partnership with the FinTech Forum, an annual event taking place in Frankfurt, where there's a lot of um, very interesting and new FinTech startups showing up every year. Of course, there will be another one in likely November 2021. And um, you can check down here in the show notes their link and their program. After we get through this, um, people already can tell from, let's say, the slight hint of your logos that your startup is Tangany. Um, but can we first talk a little bit about what do you did before? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've seen, um, of course, I'm going through your LinkedIn profile. And as always, everybody who'd like to learn more about you, you can go down here in the show notes. There is a link to your personal LinkedIn profile where people can reach out to you directly as well. Keep in mind to like and subscribe to this video wherever you're watching this. So um, you have been a quality manager and head of advertising, advertising in companies. Have you been an employee there or did you already start out as an entrepreneur? So yeah, the, the quality manager is a very long, long time ago, so we might skip that one. But yeah, after that, I've been in a company as an employee from 2011, I believe, um, until 2017, if I remember correctly. And uh, in my past um, job, I was in a complete other industry. It was online marketing. And my background is uh, informatics and uh, economy, which I have started a few, yeah, many years uh, ago. And so, yeah, I entered the digital marketing scene and um, my work then was not even comparable to what I'm doing now. Um, but it was very funny because it was a small team. It was startup-like. Um, I started as, uh, I believe, the seventh employee there and we have grown to 60 people and within five six years or so rapid growth here and we have won a lot of awards from google and microsoft which are the biggest player in the digital marketing scene so we have achieved quite a lot and with that um, i have also i, I got, I got more and more responsibility in the team and I started as a team lead and I have a team of two people and the team has grown to 10 people and then I was the head of and the team has further grown to 20 people, 25 people in the end. So I've seen a lot like how startups are working and how startups can uh, get when they are success successful. And yeah, that was what I've done back then, digital marketing. And um, you may wondering how I ended up in blockchain. So <laughs> that was exactly my next question. How do you go from digital advertisement into blockchain cryptocurrencies? Um, how did this happen and where did you catch the crypto bug? Yeah, so yeah, so my background is very always tech related, right? Digital marketing is more about numbers and statistics than about um, advertising or about um, banners or something like that so and when 2017 hit there were two events which came together and created some kind of momentum for me the one was that the agency was being sold to a bigger competitor which was some kind of exit and that was also the beginning of the end for me because a lot of things have changed. Um, new contact persons, new culture, many changes, not to the worse, many to the better, I believe, but still a lot of changes. And I have figured out that my road ended there somehow. 
And at the same time, as you may remember, Bitcoin hit new all-time highs back then in 2017. So one road ended, another road which opened up because I am familiar with Bitcoin since 2011. I didn't study back then. Um, unfortunately, didn't mine any Bitcoins. Um, but still, yeah, I, that topic came back into my attention, to my attention, and that created the momentum to to leave a, a very good job and a really great team and to start a uh, complete new adventure. How did you explain it to your friends and your family? I know um, for, for, my, uh, for my friends and family, it was not understandable how I ended up from doing consulting jobs and leading team theirs to being a freelancer and podcaster. So that didn't make sense. What was the first reaction you've gotten there? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I believe most thought I went crazy. So <laughs> I, I really had a good job, well payment, good team, people, interesting work to do, interesting partners and clients. So basically everything you possibly can seek for. And still, uh, I left everything behind and started new. And I believe after the first um, reaction, which were just surprise on, on, the, on the face of the people I have told that, I believe most of them have understood what I'm seeking for and looking for and what I try to, to achieve. And I believe, well, in my opinion, I was it was the perfect time to start and try and start up because I was still young, had no family, no children. So nothing, not too much to lose, so to say. And it was the, the one time I thought, okay, if I'm going to do a startup, then it's now the time and not any, anything later. Mm -hmm. I see. And wh how did you start in the startup world and how did it lead to Tangany? Yeah, so the first thing was, of course, to create a team. And um, first, we were two founders. Um, one of my colleagues back then at uh, the agency uh, had this, was in the same situation. Um, Bitcoin ra r rose to no highs and the old path has ended somehow. And, well, we have figured out, okay, what do we need in our team? We need more tech experience and some other experience. And... With that, we have gathered two other members from the same agency, which was somehow a lot of people leaving at the same time. But that was the perfect setup because we all know each other for, I don't know, 10 years now. And uh, we trust each other. And so we decided to start at the same time for the same adventure, something in the field of blockchain, not knowing what it would be finally. I, I'm very sure the people who remained and owned the agency there were bustling with enthusiasm when so many people left at the same time. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most definitely, they laughed it. <laughs> I see, 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 see. Um, and when you, every time I talk with uh, new entrepreneurs, in your case, it's a, it's a little bit different because when I understood it right, there were four co-founders. Um, but what was your before before we get into what Tangany does can you give us a little bit hint or ideas um because we've talked in the past about the importance of your first hires um what did you do there like the first person you hired you didn't know personally for some time what was that like for you and what did you learn yeah, so yeah, the fifth team member, well, one of our four co-founders has left us one year after the start. So we were only three co-founders remaining. And the fourth member of the team was the first external one. And I wouldn't, yeah, well, I would say it wasn't too much of a challenge because back then at the agency, I've, um, I've created a team from uh, about 25 people. I led more than, I don't know, 100 job interviews and have selected the perfect players for the team back then. And basically, it was the same mission and challenge here. As Tangany, of course, it was a bit harder because nobody knew us and we were new on the, on the field. And you have to explain to everybody what you're doing and why it's um, so interesting to work for Tangany and what's the mission and vision here. 
but basically I only used the experience and knowledge I have gathered in my job before that. Huh, I see, see. We've always talked about Tangany and you display those logos so prominently here. Yeah, maybe the people can see the screenshot who are just listening to this. Um, I, I was wondering, could you explain like in layman terms, not everybody is a blockchain aficionado on our podcast, what you guys are actually doing and how did you did you find out that there's a problem, that there's a need uh, you can actually serve with the company? Yeah, sure. So yeah, what we do in the most simplified way, we are a custodian or a bank for digital assets. And digital assets are based on blockchain. The most known one is Bitcoin or Ethereum. But there are many other um, tokens and projects on based on blockchain like security tokens. And we are custodian, regulated custodian, where those assets can be stored at. And we are doing that service for companies in a white labeled manner, which means they are using our tech infrastructure solution to integrate blockchain and crypto custody into their product and service. So it's a very technical product and a very not visible one as our product is invisible invisible it's only an api interface which makes it very hard to explain and to show um, but yeah in the end it's getting more simplified by uh, as blockchain gets adapted and crypto custody is a very well known service nowadays so you 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 not only working in crypto custody since this is a b2b podcast a lot of entrepreneurs founders and investors are listening to this can you elaborate a little bit more on what you guys what is your api actually doing what what is the uh use the utility you guys provide yeah sure so the api is, is it's the tool for our partners our company partners to use blockchain they are able to create wallets for blockchain they are able to read the balance of wallets how many bitcoins are stored in a specific wallet they are able to do a transaction via api we will handle the complexity of that so it's a very unified entry to the world of blockchain one standardized api and they are they are able to do everything you can imagine doing with blockchain by using that and they do not have to hassle around <laughs> with all the challenges and and yeah um, obstacles that blockchain still has so it's a very simply simplified way to use blockchain and of course doing custody is a very challenging one in terms of security it security is the key and that is a very yeah the approach you have to take to ensure the highest security is another one, like doing a usual IT project where security can well considered a little bit lower. And that is what we are providing from a tech perspective. And that is combined with the regulation as being regulated. Um, our partners, sorry, companies usually do not need to apply for a license themselves, which avoids a lot of time, costs, and nerves. Uh, because becoming a regulated financial institute is a really long way to go. Yes, I totally see that. Um, if I would now understand it correctly, I, I, I'm not a coder here, yes? So um, I would say you guys are kind of the plug-in one would need if one would like to integrate cryptocurrencies and blockchain in their software for example providing a wallet yeah fully agree that's exactly what we do so if you have a website mobile app software whatsoever um, you take our solution plug it into and boom you got your wallet you got your blockchain connectivity and you're ready to go digital assets <laughs> um, it, it, the people uh, on YouTube have seen you smiling because I was so happy I understood it let it let us get a little bit back to cryptocurrency custody because custody used to be the case somebody was there had a, a very simplified was there had a big world usually a bank and they stored their physical assets ever since it moved more and more and more and more into 
digital space. So right now, um, most securities issued, for example, in Germany just have one paper-based certificate and the rest is all digital. Um, how is crypto uh, cryptocurrency or crypto custody handled with you guys? What are you guys doing? Uh, what are the obstacles there? Yeah, but you already uh, compared the two worlds. You have the traditional custody of money like euros or certifications or shares, and you have some kind of the new world or the yeah digital one, and that allows you to store cryptocurrencies, but it's not limited to that. It's more like crypto assets, and we have a lot of partners who are doing tokenization, for example, um, tokenization of real estate um, of um, of art and and and, and uh, yeah other um, um, collectibles um, tokenization of other elements like debt or financing and that is already done but it's still connected to a certificate 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 <laughs> Yeah, that's the uh, sorry. And um so it's still connected to a physical entity. And that's is about to be to, to change. The the regulators are about to introduce the crypto security, which will be fully digital. There will be no longer any physical entity connected to that or attached to that. And that will be a huge change for the German market as we will be able to issue tokens on blockchain and that token will be the actual security not only a duplicate of that yeah and our listeners and our viewers they may remember that we talked to guys like amazing blocks or bitbond for example um so but thing is a, a null person cannot like a, a retail investor cannot show up at your doorsteps and say uh, I do have a USB stick here and I want to keep it safe with you guys. You are just providing the software for that, I would say, for example, for financial institutions, but also for non-regulated entities, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's a pure B2B use case for regulated and unregulated partners. And they are the one who are offering the service to the market like tokenization investments or crypto payments, crypto investments, um, whatsoever their use cases or business cases. And we are the one who are, are empowering everything in the background <clears throat> to ensure that the blockchain component works as expected. Just between you and me and like 20 to 30,000 listeners and viewers of this interview, can you give us like a level of paranoid uh, uh, a level how much paranoid you have to be in order to provide a really secure uh, crypto custody solution how, how high is that level <laughs> i believe it's at the top <laughs> well crypto security or security of crypto assets is another level like doing security for example on on the bank level like euros because in that field you always know in case anything happens, the euros are transferred to another bank, and you may yeah well you are may able to reach out to the bank and to revert that kind of transaction. That is something in the worst case that cannot be done with bitcoins. If somebody gets access to the bitcoins and it's transferring to his own wallet, there is no way to revert that uh, incident. And for that reason, security is everything, and. Um, it took us a very, very long time to to design the architecture of our product to ensure the highest thinkable um, security. Yeah, I would say only the paranoid survived uh, survive, especially in the realms of cryptocurrency. I remember uh, at the beginning of the cryptocurrencies, there was uh, some guy at a TV station who was just waving his QR code in the camera and zack, his Bitcoin was stolen. <laughs> Yeah, there are so many stories or different uh, scenarios, but yeah, you have to be really, really careful what you do. And that also means uh, your clients, meaning another company, another client-facing company, uh, could provide uh, a, a crypto wallet, a crypto asset custody 
um, with you guys. Um, so, since we're talking to a lot of people who who may or may not be interested in that, could you describe a little bit what those companies could do, or for example, what your tool, your service, your software is currently used for? Yeah, sure. There are many different use cases as blockchain itself is like the internet. And if uh, I ask you, what can you do with the internet? There are many answers. And um, But to give a, a few examples what our partners are doing, we have a lot of partners doing tokenization. So the issuance of tokens on a blockchain, which represent specific amount of value for real estate or debts or whatsoever and uh, the, the tokens can be bought and purchased and traded and you gain your yield for, for, for investing in that kind of investment of course that is one major topic the tokenization itself but there is also the crypto currency use cases like bitcoin saving plan um, imagine you would like to save 100 euros per month into bitcoin automatically how would you do it there are not too many um, um, of uh, services for that at, as of now at least and one of our partners provides such a service you transfer the 100 euros and they are getting invested into bitcoin and you don't need to 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 manage anything on your own so a highly automated solution another one is crypto payments um, for with bitcoins uh, but also with stable coins. So stable coins are tokens which are always equally to one euro or one dollar, um, which is a way more stable um, yeah, crypto asset. Um, and for that, you are able to pay with that. And a few of our partners are doing such use cases. So it's a very broad range of different use cases. It's more like you have a use case and you want to figure out whether the blockchain can be beneficial for that and that is a question we can help to, to, to answer and in case it, it's beneficial to the business case then we are also the one who can provide the tech and often the, the regulatory compliance that uh, that is a good point um because people of course uh, down here in the show notes there will be either a link to blog post with uh, your company website at, or uh, directly linked to your company website, depending on the terms of usage and so on and so forth. Um, but I would be interested before somebody gets on your website and starts researching this, are you limited in terms of legal regulatory reasons where you could provide your software, let's say to a financial institution in Europe, in China, in the US, are there any limits? Yeah, regulatory aspects are very important and a good topic. So there are countries where we are not able to, to offer our service, of course, because there is no regulation in place, which is not um, yeah, any near where what we can provide or what kind of regulation we bring in, case by case analysis, because um, you have our B2B partner and the partner has also our target group, which usually the retail market and every case is different. So we have to look into where is the partner located, where are his customers located and who is doing what kind of service. And then while figuring out the, the, the scenario here, then we are able to tell our partner what licenses might be necessary, what we might be able to bring in and what might be needed to, to clarify with the regulators and the, with the, and those uh, jurisdictions. Ha, huh, I never forget the taxes. They always screw you, huh? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think uh, most people will get now a will now have a rough idea of what you guys are providing. Um, let me get uh, one of the standard questions still out of the way here. Um, are you guys open for external investors? Are you currently looking for capital, or would you be open if some VC reaches out and you say, "Oh, let's take the call"? Yeah, well, so um, we did a round last year in January, so exactly one year ago, and we are planning another one. Um, so if somebody is interested in the use case, 
I'm always uh, looking forward to get in touch, uh, but there's nothing uh, specifically to announce yet as um, such a um, potential investment round is uh, still in the preparation phase. At the time of recording this, we are not sure if there's a crypto euro coming, but would you be happy if uh, the euro will be become at least a part or totally blockchain based? Would that be a big business for you guys? Yeah, most definitely. Digital euro based in blockchain would be a really huge use case. Imagining that every citizen in the European Union needs a wallet. Um, that's a very, very huge opportunity for service providers like our, ourselves to provide our service to banks so that they are able to provide uh, the crypto wallet to their customers. But I'm not so sure, to be honest, um, to whether the digital euro will end up on the blockchain or on another digital solution. So that needs to be figured out. A lot of other central banks have chosen a blockchain, Corda at least, as far as I know, which is some kind of blockchain, a private one. But not sure where the e ECB will end up finally. But I'm very convinced that digital euro will be introduced in some way or another. Um, I'll make myself a reminder and when the decision is made to have a digital euro on a So, some type of blockchain i'm sure to share this into you again and i'm sure um investors will take notice thank you very much It was just a pleasure having you here looking forward to speak to you again yeah thank you joe for having me today and looking forward seeing you again soon that's all folks find more news streams events and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.